Camera one, camera two. Boom, mind pump time. All right, we're going to give away Maps Anabolic uh, to one lucky viewer. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel, and turn on your notifications. By the way, that helps us with the YouTube algorithm because we're trying to get in front of more people to fix the fitness industry and to become the best. We want to become the best uh, and most listened around. So do those things. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, right now, we are launching a new MAPS program called MAPS Resistance. It's the perfect resistance training, strength training program for people getting started in resistance training. So if you're just getting started and you want to know what to do, follow MAPS Resistance. It includes three programs. So the first one is bands and body weight. The second one is with dumbbells only. And then the third one is barbells and dumbbells. By the way, the program is on sale and we do a lot of giveaways because we know a lot of people are going to get started on their fitness journey. So here's what we're giving away with that program. The intuitive nutrition guide to help you with your diet, a year free access to our private forum so you can get all the support that you need, two eBooks written by Jason Phillips, Macros Applied and Macros Explained. Okay. So it's like a 300 and something dollar value, all of it, $77 right now. This promotion's ending very shortly after we post this video. So if you're interested, head over to mapsresistance.com and then use this code for all that free stuff and the discount, RESIST20. That's RESIST20 for that special offer. All right, here comes the show. Most programs suck because they <laughs> lack these few things. Training left to right and rotation. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Wow, I like that. Yeah, that's huh? really good. Is that you, compelling enough? You know, to make it more, uh, to be more, I guess, trainer with it, I guess it has to do with just the planes of movement, right? Like a lot of programs are all like moving in this direction. Everything is front and back. And that's about it is yeah. typically what you see in most commercial gym settings. Yeah. And they lack- What's your theory on that? Why? Yeah, like why? Why do why are why are trainer trainers um, writing more programs? That's a like good that? question. I yeah. you know I have a theory. I think it has to do with that. The most and this is true, right? The most effective, generally most effective, muscle building exercises are like squats, rows, presses, overhead presses, and those all are in the same plane. They don't involve any rotation or lateral movement. And although they are effective at very effective at building muscle. The lack of lateral stability strength and the lack of rotational strength and stability eventually reduces the amount of muscle and strength you can gain even from those exercises. Yeah. I mean, you do build substantial muscle from those compound lifts, and so it's hard to stray away from that or like really see the value in, in rotation and some of these other types of exercises because you're not going to see like this crazy muscle gain necessarily other than it really complements and, and gives you longevity in your training. So. so I think, I think it's even simpler of an answer than that. I think it's, it's hard. Well, that too. More challenging to program. You mean? No, not even that. Just it's, they're difficult exercises. A, lo yeah. a lot of the, when you, when you move in different planes that you're not used to moving in, they're challenging, challenging stability, form and technique. You can't wise. use a lot of weight on them. Uh, they tend to, they uh, tend to get your heart rate going a lot of times. Like, so I think that they're, they're hard. Yeah. So do you guys have any, I have an example, right? I think you do too. Uh, Justin, in fact, I think you and I have a similar story where our lateral stability came back to haunt us actually very similar yeah so like uh deadlifts right deadlifts move in the same plane oh, as the yeah. bench and mm -hmm. the rest and i could get really strong in deadlifts uh, at one point i was able to pull 600 pounds which is okay it's not bad for someone my size but i injured my ql at least twice because when you'd lift the bar when i would lift the bar off the ground if it wasn't perfectly balanced if one side came up faster than the other even by a little bit my lack of lateral stability uh, with that much weight caused me to injure myself. Boom, I can't deadlift yep. now for a month or two. I have to do correctional exercise. And, of course, you lose gains as a result of that, you know? Yeah, I had the same issue. And it was uh, – everything was going great. And then somebody said something across the gym. I lost my complete uh, attention, and I turned to the left Ooh. and shift the weight just, just a fraction – of you know an inch and, and I was done. My I, I heard my well. I just felt my QL immediately talk to me. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's um you know those weak links, although they aren't the most um I guess responsible for the big gains. When those weak links are so weak that they can't support your gains anymore, now that's it. You plateau. You big time. So if you talk to anybody who's relatively advanced. 
This may not happen when you're a beginner, may not happen even as intermediate, although it's more common. But once you start to get advanced, ask somebody who's at that level, what's the number one thing that prevents you from making gains now? They'll tell you injury, yeah. injury and pain. It's yeah. always, those are all the top things. Well, plus I, I see a lot of that sort of stereotype of the muscle bound guy that yeah. uh, just doesn't really move well, is really stiff and rigid. Uh, I see that a lot when, um, like you look at their program and you see them just constantly in that sagittal plane. Everything is very much controlled uh, to where you, you take them outside of that. It's like they can't even really wipe their ass. Yeah. It's like, what, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. Do you guys have any favorite uh, rotational and lateral exercises that you like to incorporate? Rotational stuff. We, we mentioned this on a, a recent podcast. So for me, um, that was the, the big one. So I, I didn't really do a lot of rotational movements for my shoulders and didn't really realize how much that would carry over into like my bench and any sort of any upper body exercise for that matter overhead press rowing all that when i had good rotational strength in my shoulders so doing the clubs and the the may swings were yeah huge for me big time yeah. i mean and that was one of why i think i liked it so much was I started to see a, a carryover into the bench and, and movements like that, that I just felt more strong. I felt stronger and more stable going right into the lift where yeah. in the past I'd have to do all these kind you have of to like, get perfectly in the groove. Yeah. I had to get right in the groove. Yeah. I do all these warm up sets. I had all these like kind of priming movements that I would try and do to get, to get myself in the optimal position to actually be able to get after a bench. Uh, where when I started incorporating more of the clubs and mace just into the routine, I could get right into it. And I felt I felt in like this this great position to bench right away. So that was a big one for me. Yeah. Uh, what for me was, uh, so I, I always incorporated some form of rotation, mainly because it was all aesthetic because I liked having developed obliques. So I would do, so that wasn't a huge issue, uh, although it still was because it wasn't really proportional. But you know when I noticed a huge difference? was when I started to prime with like lateral tube walking, like such a silly movement. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. I could squat so much better and stronger. And then I, and it was, and then it was too obvious. I'm like, okay, I need to do lateral stuff. So I started doing practicing Cossack squats where I step out, which I'm terrible still to this day, but better than I was. And then lateral sled, dra uh, sled drags, which oh, a great. huge difference in my squats. Yeah, well, addressing sort of that QL issue, I started to get back into windmills and you know bent presses and things oh, like yeah. that to really try to to address the issue and get strong uh, with that. Especially thoracic rotation with my upper back was you know a consideration. I didn't really have much rotation there, so that really helped a lot. It, like keep me nice and sturdy going back into deadlifts and some of those. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I would love to see you try because I haven't seen you do it yet. And I, me, I, yeah, oh. I, I. I stole this from the squat university guys was the assisted McGill planes. Oh, those, those bro, I, I did that once. Did you? Yeah, I, I did that once. I tell you what, that, my, so my, I am my range of motion on that's terrible. Yeah, absolutely terrible. Yeah, no, I think it, well, the fact that you're assisted, like I just doing, I mean, obviously doing McGill planes would be great, but yeah. those are challenging for a lot of people. So being able to hold the bar and assist, you could really, so you know what I noticed when I did it, I only mm. did it once after you talked about it a while ago Yeah, and was, I actually tried it the next day. And what I noticed, and this is a hallmark of poor connection, is even with my arms getting me into position, I felt disconnected. Oh, Once I wow. went past a certain point. That's crazy. Which, you know, again, uh, you train pe people better than you train yourself. I should have been doing that yeah. ever since. Uh, but I just, uh, you know, I just didn't do it, which is kind of, you know, kind of dumb. That's in the rotation now for me on a regular basis. And I had never, I had never done that before. Yeah. But that wasn't, it wasn't something I was doing on a regular, but now I'm like all about it. This is why we, I mean, you know, when we came out with our programs, MAPS Anabolic was the first one, very sagittal plane focus, very like build muscle mass, speed up the metabolism strength. That's why performance followed. If you, if you look at MAPS performance, it's all about working in multiple planes. That's why it's such a complimentary program to follow post. And that's why staying in one program, no matter how well written it is, eventually you'll start to get weaknesses because it's, uh, first of all, what makes a program effective is also what creates its weakness, right? So yeah. you have a very effective program for a specific target goal. That means that there's other things that you're not focused on because if you focus on everything at once, you don't get a lot of any of them. You get a little bit of everything. So any perf any great programs always going to have weaknesses because of that. That's why it's so good to go from, you know, focus to another focus because then you get become more well-rounded. You re avoid injury. You're 
ultimately in the long term you build more muscle get better results you know all that stuff yeah you so, keep going man yeah and that's the point all right so i wanted to bring up something interesting because i know we have we've been talking more adam about the business side of yep. the stuff that we do and the potential <laughs> opportunities yeah bro i didn't even know this well, look literally directly across from you there's a million dollar potential that we have been missing completely wait a minute what completely at, like this machine yeah right here? absolutely yeah. so well, i read this, this article vessel? i read this article i'm like dude <laughs> this is such a fallback i know where he's going with this i'm glad you're, you're using me as an example but <laughs> please tell the audience what <laughs> you're right, about where are you going with this? all right so describe over here so reality star as soon as i read this i'm like dude we could crush this <laughs> reality star stephanie mateo stephanie mateo so she was on tlc's 90 day fiance Ready for this? Okay. She's selling her farts in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Five hundred dollars a pop. Shut your face. Wait. She, okay. Nobody's really buying Pure that. Jar? Right? No, no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. How big are these jars? Hold on, <laughs> hold on a second. Jesus. I know, right? You know what I mean? Just I like where your head's at. You're thinking shipping listen. cost already, right? right? Trying to keep that down. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm so, like, I can produce more volume. Same price. Same price. I won't beat that market. I got you. You get a gallon bottle. No, yeah. listen to this. I'm like wholesaler over here. So trip off this, dude. She's selling farts in a jar for five hundred dollars a pop in a month. A hundred thousand dollars. No way. <laughs> yes, dude. Come on. <laughs> That's what it, that's what she what, did. Where's this demand? Like who who are these guys? A hundred thousand dollars she made in a month selling her farts in a jar. In a jar. Is she, okay, she gorgeous. Like how can I see I her? I know, right? I mean, like, Doug, pull her up, pull her up so, so I can yeah, see Doug, how. Her, so I mean, Stephanie I mean, Matto, M A. She's got to be like on another smell level. Like, I mean, hours. like you, you, she's pretty enough. She's smell your fart pretty. She's pretty enough. No. <laughs> you good. know what it is? That's, dude? that's like a category now. That's so you know weird. There's like dimes. Everyone knows a dime. Then there's like smell your fart. Yeah. Hot God, that's yeah. like it. That's like the next level. Do, Justin hit the nail on the yeah. head. He's yeah. like, that must be a bunch of guys. It is a bunch. There's no way women are. Of course, it's a imagine? bunch of dudes. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I have a feeling. She's, is she a hot like Instagrammer that does like the booty pics and everything? No, well, she's a reality. Okay, no, that's yeah, like she's a like weird. A, is that fetish, her, dude? Is that her right there? That is her. I mean, I would smell her farts <laughs> for five hundred dollars. Okay, no, I wouldn't pay five hundred bucks. No, how, how much okay. would you pay to smell her farts? I wouldn't pay anything. I, but <laughs> yeah, I would smell. All right, that's yeah. what oh I my thought. god, it depends what she ate, dude. I mean, for what? me. Uh, what? <laughs> So what do you? <laughs> Somebody has to say it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, I mean, what, what, not all the real, same, right? what do you? Future. What do you predict it smells like, Justin? Oh God! What do you think? Like, a, <laughs> I feel like a, a maple syrup this. waffles. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Does, she looks like a maple no, syrup like, waffle farm. Yeah, it's First like a all, sweet. Uh, oh, come yeah. on, bro. You guys are crazy. There's no sweet smell. Farts don't smell sweet. No, when you're that when you're that cute, you definitely yeah, fart like you, cute you'd smell. Hope so is, no, is so I would like to see. Here's what I'd like to see. How many of these? Fart purchasers yeah. are returning customers. Like, what's her? Where can you buy? What's my her sure lifetime value? Wait, go back to that, Doug. Could you? Where can you buy my farts? I want to see. Where can you buy my farts? www.unfiltro.com, and then her. I'm saying that's her name. Where can you sell yours? Oh, you could. It's like a community, Justin. Then you can become a creator. Wow. Justin. Wow. Just, a, just a fart jar and community. So, so Dude, I have hey, to, talk about like what a rip off though. Let's be honest. This is a rip off. More signs. How, how fresh does that stay in a jar? I want a video, the dude, because who knows where the source came from? Yeah, how long? Right? Can That's you, actually a good question. Yeah. I wonder if the jar comes with. Like, I want a video it to be of her, authenticated. Of her farting because five hundred dollars is a lot of money, dude, for that. Exactly. I know. Imagine she's got like some like she's little, little boy, neighbor, little just, teenage boy yeah. that's assisting her, and he's just over there farting all day. Four hundred pounds. These dudes over here fantasizing their. Getting yeah. their farts. <laughs> just have some of their teenage boys' farts. Hey, hold on. Like, hold how, on. can you sue? Can hold you on. sue after that? Can Adam, I, if I find out, like, like it was somebody else's farts. Adam, was you're, you're one of the smartest. girl. You're one of the smartest business guys I know. <laughs> Immediately, what I think is there's a scaling problem with this business. I know, right? If she's selling farts, she can only fart so well, much. Well, that's the answer. So she's gonna have a. That's bunch right. Of, that's the answer. That, yeah, I mean, it is scalable, but you gotta be a little shady. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta get some you know teenage boys working underneath you on high protein just that are. Just ripping them yeah, all day for you. Yeah, and you're just yeah. paying a minimum wage. So, just a serious question though well, here. Some crazy okay, serious persons. question. That's real. Because as a kid, <laughs> real um, powerful stuff. <laughs> when I was a kid, my best friend's older brother used to 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 pin us down, and he would fart in a cup and he throw it in our face. And you absolutely that absolutely ha works big time. Yeah, that's. See, that's, I look at it as a joke too, right? You know, like you could you could buy that and like, be like oh, it's a nice gift for fly and you open it and it's. So my question, where I'm getting at with this, is face. <laughs> Can you? Can, does it stay in there? Like, does it? I mean, does it's it, gotta be would, vacuum would, sealed or whatever. No, or, no, no or would no. it leak out? I would think yeah. it would leak out somehow. I don't think it's gonna stay. Or would I the smell 
Would it go away after a while? Of course. Yeah, it only would hold for so long, right? You're not going to keep it in there yeah. that long. Well, yeah. how? What do you mean? Why? Why not? I mean, come on, science guy. What's uh, what happens here? <laughs> what is is it? <laughs> It's I like, mean, I mean, what do you call? Osmosis you're right. I have no idea. Era. Yeah, like I what? Know. I mean, it what like makes diffuses? It, I mean, I, my you know, there, my dog has farted in the house before, where it has lingered for like 15 minutes. So, yeah. and that's open air. So, if it was trapped, I would think that would be yeah, yeah. Uh, pack a punch. Well, you, I would. You bought that. You might kill somebody. So, I'm thinking that she would have to either a, it's novelty, funny. Oh, her her bare butt was on this. I'll buy it. Or she does something to it so that it does. Because what if I wonder if these guys open it and it smells like nothing? Are they mm. are they sad? Are they like oh man? Oh, well, it's like the uh, your, like the invisible art guy who sold for like a million dollars. So is this a sign? Yes, that, is this a sign this of the one. economic bubble? Yes, this is definitely somebody made a hundred thousand dollars a month selling. The you can forks. make money on anything, you guys. Hey, in the future when the economic crash, watch this. Economic crash is coming, right? Yeah, just just worse than 08. and then people are gonna look back and be like. Oh, the signs were all there. Yeah, <laughs> you think? <laughs> you this think? is a tipping point, right? How did here, people dude? not know this was going to happen? There was somebody selling their farts and made $100,000. Pretty funny. <sighs> anyway, it's uh, the same thing as NFTs. Let's get into some science. So, this is kind of cool, right? So, Adam and I had a discussion this morning, and you ever get information, and then you look back and you go, oh, uh, that th makes sense. This is or uh, I was right. Explains everything. You're, you're this you're makes a lot of sense. So uh, I noticed that like, for the you know for a little while there, Adam was a little uh, edgy. Oh, I right thought we were talking about something else. No, no. <laughs> I thought you were no. going to talk about the IQ thing. No, we'll get there too. <laughs> Adam was a little bit edgy for a little while there, but you know, it's like, all right, whatever. We're all you know, listen, we're listen, we Linda. Like to say like, moody. Hey, listen, no, I haven't told these guys. I was starting to tell Sal. This is this is this actually, is crazy. Actually, no, this is actually really interesting. So yeah, Friday, is. I had um, had my call with Doctor Todd. Right, so you know they for they, regenerative sports. Yeah, they follow medicine. after you've been doing it as long as we have. I think it's every three months or so that we. Yeah, they do regular checkups, blood work, all that. Yeah, stuff. when you first get started, you do regular, and then you then you you start to extend it. I think three months. So we had like my three month checkup. And, uh, you know, he goes over my blood panels. Well, anyways, we were talking business first, and we were just going back and forth. And uh, he was asking how I was feeling. I said, oh, man, I, I actually feel really good. Energy, libido, all that stuff's good. I said, but, you know, I have noticed some some uh, some weird stuff with my joints. I'm like, you know, I took like a week off of lifting. And normally when I do that, it, any sort of inflammation or achiness that I'm dealing with, it completely gets rid of it. And then I, when I come back, it normally takes a while before I notice it again. And I said, so I did that in my diet. I'm, I'm lower calorie right now, which also helps with that. And I said, I was doing real lightweight when I, I came back. And right away, both my elbows were on fire. Just they were bothering me like crazy. And I felt it the next two days after that workout. And I wasn't even lifting heavy. I said, so that's the only thing I have. And I was actually asking him questions about, um, because before when I was doing my own you know, hormone therapy. I was taking <laughs> things like EQ, which is like a, you know, veterinary drug yeah. and stuff. But yeah, I, was known as the chemical I was telling him that, you know, it, was there anything to that? Because when I used to take that, my joints felt amazing. He said, well, absolutely. He goes, but what you're experiencing is exactly what I want to talk to you about. So I said, what do you mean? He goes, oh, your estrogen's in the floor. Mm -hmm. And he goes, and number the number one and number two side effects is, is the achy joints and then irritability. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this was hey, this is two hours after it. Sal and I had just got into it. On yeah, dude. Uh, this like, is after him and I got that big so ass I, argument. I start laughing right away. I go, well, <laughs> I send him that right. I, after. Yeah, I go, it was literally two hours. It was we, it was Friday when we got into it, right? Yeah. And we got into it. It was a yeah. pretty heated one, right? And, uh, yeah. And I did. I have my call, and he's I like, "I did text you a lovely, a love text." Me and Doug yeah, hugged yeah. after that. We're, you we're gonna you be guys right. hugged over We're it? gonna be all right. You know, <laughs> they, they get into these tiffs. It's gonna be fine. I yeah. sucked Doug into that one that time. I wasn't letting Doug out of it. Doug, fucking say something. Yeah, Shut it. Doug's all. I don't want to say. You shit. got my yeah. back, Doug. Just fucking speak up, Doug. I can see your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, I don't. I don't want it. In this. You, know, you know what? You know what though? I mean, the truth. Truth be told, that's why I love you guys so much. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. First of all, everybody goes through stuff, so who knows, right? I could tell something was off uh, with you it, my it's not like it was a major thing i don't know what was going on that's fine i've gone through stuff everybody has but what i love about us is we don't take shit personal so it may get heated but it's left it's done we yeah, get yeah. back to work it's not like i leave and i'm like oh my god what's gonna you know, i think to myself <laughs> and actually i reached out to adam and i told him i appreciate that we can do that yeah and then get right back to work and i also didn't want to say 
hey man, I noticed you're a little off. It's kind of invalidating. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like telling you, asking also, your girl she's on her period uh, when she's on her period. It never works. <laughs> when it backfires mad. every time. Yeah, yeah, backfires every time. I have some science behind but, this. But no, this is a great, this is a great topic because a lot of people, this is why we chose to work well, with Well, yeah, let me explain, let me medicine. finish explaining what, so we obviously, so we find out, okay, so um, I'm very sensitive to uh, gynecomastia, right? Because I've had it in the past. And if, uh, you, as soon as I take, start taking testosterone, one of the first things I notice is I get the sensitivity and it starts to come back. So one of the things that they, they have me on is the Arimidex or what's the- Anastrozole, uh, I think is the chemical name. Yeah, whatever, right? So they, they have basically an estrogen blocker, right? So I and What take, it does is it prevents the, uh, it prevents the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. Right. So it reduces estrogen. Right. So I take that 24 hours. I take one milligram of that 24 hours after I, I take my testosterone. Sometimes I'll take another one 48 hours if I still feel a little sensitive, but that's the most I take. And I guess I'm just ultra sensitive to it that it works really well, but it works so well that it completely slams my estrogen down. And I didn't know that. And I was telling him like, there's times where I'll, sometimes I will take two because I feel like I'm sensitive or something. And I always get paranoid about that. So I, I take another one right away. And he goes, yeah, the problem with that is th your body responds and you, your estrogen drops all the way down. And then you're going to feel the symptoms that you're feeling, which was is this like, where the term testy comes from. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think yeah. so. He's I don't a think bit that's, testy today. Because it's 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 your estrogen that's really causing it. Um, what hey, what dicks now? Anytime Adam says something, you know, we're gonna be like, uh, is your uh, somebody yeah, give yeah. him some estrogen? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was actually I was actually really happy and excited. This is one of my it explains things, one right? of my favorite parts about. I mean, I, in the past, I've done all this stuff on my own, and I don't know, you know. And I, I honestly, I would have attributed the uh, achy joints and stuff to something to do with lifting and diet, which yeah. was right away what I did myself. Right away, I adjusted that. That, yeah. thinking that that was the issue and then it, and some mobility stuff I was doing well, too. Well, that's, that's a testament to you being a, a, a health person, right? You're going to look at lifestyle choices first. Right. right? Yeah. So right away I went that direction and it still wasn't helping. It was, it was bothering me a little bit. I couldn't get to the bottom of it. So I've, I felt so relieved when I expressed that to him and he goes, it completely makes sense because your estrogen so how are so they long. adjusting this for you? So the first thing is that to lay, like he wants me to take two weeks off of the, uh, the Remedex or whatever, right? Okay. So I'm off of that for two weeks. Another potential thing that we can do is uh, Nandrolone, which is like DECA. Mm -hmm. So I guess that also helps. With the with, joint stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, so. It uh, also helps with the uh, uh, the estrogen being converted. Because it converts a little bit more to estrogen. Yeah, too. yeah. Mm -hmm. I forget. He explained me the mechanism and how it works. So I didn't yeah. completely. So they, they work with testosterone and they work with the two um, prescribed anabolics, uh, Anavar and Nandrolone, depending on the individual and what they're looking for. Of course, you have to have all the blood work which is which i like because they're not afraid right there's such a stigma around even testosterone yeah that like that one the first one of the first places we talked to way back they were so afraid to go above 100 milligrams for a guy you know oh no and then they move you up 10 milligrams which is ridiculous um especially if your symptoms are, are still there no this is interesting because people need to realize this testosterone is essential for women and estrogen is essential for men now lower doses different uh you know amounts but it's essential. If your estrogen is in the floor as a man, you'll feel like shit, depressed. Uh, you can get anxiety, irritability. Your libido could get crushed. Your lipid levels could go all over the place, and you won't build as much muscle. In fact, with animal cattle, when they inject cattle with uh, hormones to bulk them up, which are all testosterone derivatives, they will also give them estrogen because they won't gain as much muscle if it's just the, the testosterone derivative. Yeah, you need to balance it a bit. You have to balance it. And this is why it's so important that you work with a clinic that knows their shit because with the, with the testing, you got to make sure you're in the right balance and people are so different because if you're not, yeah. then you can run into problems, you know? And to be honest, I actually, so I flaked on them like two weeks before because that's when I was supposed to have my appointment. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, I'm fine. Like, I don't need to do a follow up. I've been good. We've got our level. Yeah. They got my levels down, and, and I figured out my dose that I think is pretty perfect for me. Um, but I, I wasn't even connecting uh, the joint stuff, yep. and uh, and I actually wasn't even thinking about the irritability thing. I mean, I'm sure Katrina and you can uh, testify to that. We have a separate I, text thread. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't really on the radar until he said like those are the one and two. And I thought, well, I did just get into it with Sal two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, maybe that's a little off. So, yeah. but I, I'm that makes me. Ha I was happy, you know, like that was it was nice to. Uh, 
to have somebody that that's you know tell me what's yeah. going on. You know so. what's funny is uh, so after I told the audience that I you know been doing TRT and the whole story uh, behind all that, I the response has been so overwhelmingly positive, in the sense that there's a lot of men and women who've been messaging me saying, you know what, your story convinced me just to get my stuff looked at because mm. like you. I eat right, I exercise, I do all the stuff, and I just can't figure out what the hell is wrong with my with, with yeah. how I feel. Mm -hmm. And because of what you said, I I went ahead and got, which is good because what will happen is you'll get tested and they'll say no, everything looks good, or they'll say oh, here's what's going on, and then you'll have some options or some answers because yeah. I, I can only imagine. Well, well I, that, I, mean, to I know me, what that's, it's like. That's the 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 coolest part about all this whole thing is forget the testosterone that I will or will not do, or the it's like just. That was something I had been troubleshooting for like the last month by myself, yep. not thinking it had anything to do with my hormones. I completely thought it had something to do with, man, am I not getting enough rotation? Like we're talking about rotational stuff. Am I not doing enough rotational yeah, stuff? Mobility so is so I was doing like mobility stuff. I was, I, and I thought, man, am I, maybe it's all the dessert and candy that since Halloween I've been letting in my diet. Okay. So I cut all that out, went low calorie. I was like, what the fuck? Why does this still bother me? Yeah. And it just, it didn't even dawn on me that that could have been There's the issue. There's nothing more mm -hmm. frustrating than, then dialing things in and you still can't figure out what the hell's going on. Well, especially and you feel like you're, you're losing your mind. Especially when oh, you're yeah. one of us. I feel like that's well, a, dude. I, I feel like it's extra bro, frustrating. You don't understand. For me. Okay. And I told the story and I don't really really go into like too much of the emotional aspect of it, but it literally felt like someone lifted the freaking curtain. And then uh, hindsight's twenty what do they always say, right? Hindsight's twenty twenty. You look back and you go, Oh, now everything makes sense. For like three years and and, and my wife is very supportive and she must have heard me say this a thousand times. I'd go up to her and I'd say, I just don't feel like myself. It's so weird. Like, it's just not. And she'd be like, you look great. And this and that. I'd be like, yeah, but it's just something's off. And I don't know what the hell's wrong. And, you know, this and that. And so it's just one of those things. Find the right place. And if you're interested in going to where we recommend, it's mphormones.com, which is, uh, you know, the place you want to go. Yeah, it's filling up these days. Yeah. Well, so, all right. So, uh, Adam, you had something you wanted to bring up i do i have on the topics of interesting is uh so already the first um sexual harassment case i believe has been filed for the metaverse so explain this i saw you say you, you brought this up a little bit. i shouldn't laugh right because it's yeah, that's, sexual on, harassment dude, it's is it. not a funny thing but it, it this is a little comical like, like to your me. your virtual avatar got sexually harassed somehow? that's exactly what went down so they just i forgot they got groped or something yes. like that yeah what? so but I mean, it's like you, I think one of you brought, I heard one of you say the whole Grand Theft Auto thing. It's like, yeah. I mean, look at the, the how graphic that is. You can go around and you could, there's. Well, well, just look at that as an example of human behavior now in the virtual world. Like what makes you think people are going to act uh, appropriately just given everything that they can do in this virtual world? Like they're going to have all these like utopian behaviors. So this is why I wanted to bring this up because it's, it's actually kind of an interesting conversation yeah. because. I I expect or predict that this is going to be crazy bad. Yep. Like this, I mean, because because I don't know. How, now, there's not any laws in place to stop mm. somebody from doing it. So what is going to right. stop somebody? And you, I mean, just think of just dumb teenage boys. Like, yes. Or I mean, just fucking You perverts. always have to factor that in. Well, or, then, or just then, perverts well, yeah. No, here's the thing. There's always going to be those people. Yeah. Yeah. And now they, they can get away with it because there's no laws to stop them doing it. And then in addition to that, you have funny teenagers who are like, there's no laws against me doing it. So yeah, I'm going to fuck. Real. I'm going to fuck with people all the time. How are they going to handle this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so how out of control? They haven't is this even been get? able to handle trolls. You know, like yeah. uh, on all the social media platforms. How are they going to handle people's behaviors? Being, you know, this avatar going around groping people and talking shit. Yeah. So I think there's going to be. First off, we have to draw a clear line. There's when you're when you're abusing or targeting minors. There's a line there. I definitely think legislation already exists. I think the legislation needs to get tougher on that. Like if my 12 year old daughter is on Roblox and some freak, you know, pervert guy takes his avatar and like, you know, simulates humping her avatar. She's seeing that happen. Yeah. That's different. So I think that's a, there's a line there, but let's say you're an adult. Yeah. But yeah, let's talk about that line though. How do you police that? Yep. You, you police it by saying nothing sexual, nothing violent, no harass, no, no curse reported, words, but it's still going to happen. Right. So I think that that's where that line has to draw. Now adults, here's what I think with adult. And now here's, what's interesting by the way, people in the metaverse, they murder each other all the time. Nobody gives a shit. So yeah. I could walk up to you and right. throw you off a cliff. Ha ha ha. Right. But now if I touch your fake butt, 
you're going to sue me? Isn't that kind of interesting with human behavior? Like what's considered okay and not okay? That's in the what metaverse? I'm saying. That's it's going to be this weird like gray sense, area on how they how do you navigate this and how I mean and the you, platforms are going to have to. They're going to have to see that, oh, people are dropping see, off. See, I, I, I think it's going to be so overwhelming they won't be able to. Or they're going to be, imagine the predicament Twitter and Instagram and Facebook are in right now with trying to police what they think is right and was wrong. And they have like, like, and it's her, never, it's right? never balanced. Yeah, it's never yeah. balanced. It's, it's, it, and, and they're they all, predict all these meetings, uh, corporate meetings you're going to have in boardrooms and everything. And like, they, they think it's going to be so like professional. And it's like, dude, I, I don't see that at all. I don't see There's that. There's no way. What if, I'm trying to think right now. You, you, you're going to have to create AI to manage this because otherwise the amount yeah, of personnel... Yeah, but look how fucked up AI. Did you see that? I, you guys know that I'm, I'm shadow banned and blocked yeah, for fucking three months. What? Yeah. Like three why? months. Was, Welcome oh, to the club, dude. Yeah, but what was the... So uh, the only thing I could think of because everyone was, has been DMing me since this weekend saying that I couldn't I couldn't find your name. I thought you were going to catch up to my Yeah, I couldn't even watch the video. So, so <laughs> you can still find... Okay, so if you go on the main Mind Pump Media IG, there's a little... Uh, where the icons are, there's like a post story, and then there's a little play button. You can go to that play button; you, it's saved in there, so you can go back and it's go. It's on the Mind Pump page. Yeah, okay. you can go. You can go watch it. But I, I was trying to do it on my story, and I think because I announced it as uh, Weed Wine Wife Talk or whatever, and because Weed was in the talk, that I think that's that's the only thing that makes sense to me because I don't have any controversial shit that I'm posting on my story like Sal is. Yeah. So there's no reason why I would have been blocked for that. The only thing I could think of is because I was promoting smoking weed. Yeah. Wow. That's that's exactly what it what is. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. There's so many people that do way worse now, stuff on there. Now, here's what's <laughs> annoying about it all. Look, they, Instagram is a private organization. They could do it. Here's why they put themselves in hot water is that they're not, uh, they don't seem to be fair with how they apply it. For example... Um, you could say on there, and people have, uh, white men are racist. That's totally fine. Death to Israel. Totally fine. Weed, wine, and wife. Eh, your shadow band. Yeah. Very straight. And so it just annoys Well, me it's also annoying, too, that there's no, um, like, I'm guessing that's what it is. I don't even know for sure. Like there's what if you what if everybody that's connected to me now is getting shadow banned? Yeah, sorry true. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm next. Well, okay. I wonder if, if there is some sort part of the algorithm though, because you've been shadow banned and then people that are closely associated with you, I don't know, like that are I'm sure there's gotta so there's be some a sort theory, of theory. There's a theory that's going around that that they will that the algorithm looks at the pages that you follow, mm. even if you don't do anything. And then when you follow certain pages, you're under a different level of scrutiny. So if you follow, let's say, controversial meme pages, there's a ton of them, or you follow certain political opinion pages, which it's obvious some political opinions are heavily scrutinized while others aren't. It's so biased. That, yes. It's crazy. It puts you in a category and then you're, you know, and then they, they watch you more. But here's the thing. Nobody knows. And I think that the only way that the social media companies are going to get out of this is if they make it super, super transparent. If they say specifically... Here's the things, and that's it. So what happened as a result with the whole fact check uh, with Facebook, how they had to admit that it's just opinion in court? Yeah. Oh, I saw that. The, so, so, what does that mean in terms of their fact checking people and like bro, social, how you know, they're they can, screwed? All, the, all, all of them are screwed. Right. The second they started editing their stuff, there's going to be people who are going to say it's not fair. When you edit stuff... You are no longer protected the same way phone companies are, right? So phone companies are protected under law where let's say I call Justin through the phone and him and I plan a bank robbery. AT&T is not liable for that because they're not editing, they're not like acting like a newspaper or magazine, they're just they're just a service. Mm -hmm. Social media actively edits, which now is going to open them up for legislation and lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And so the era of this open market, free, you know, whatever social media, is, it's over. There's no way. They're, well, they're I predict we're going to see, uh, we still haven't seen what I, uh, what the, the, the final layout will look like of social media, which I think it's going to look like the, just like the news cycle, right? Yep. Where you have super left and right. Yep. Yeah. So I think we're just, it's only a matter of time before the you know, the the red, you know, Facebook or the red Twitter. So far, it's all left. <laughs> yeah. There's like, and then the the ones like a parlor that kind of came out, got squashed. And yeah. then this whole thing with Trump trying to create one. Is now, like, you know, in the defense, though, of these guys, right? So I, I was, I heard the guys on the All In podcast. One of them knows uh, uh, Jack Dorsey. Yeah. Right? He's the Twitter guy really yep. well. 
And he says he's like a major, like libertarian, like free market type free of speech. guy. Yeah, free speech guy. And that was not his intent. And may, maybe that speaks that to why, why he he's, like, maybe that's yeah. why he stepped down. That wasn't down the because, intent of any of the guys that's, of, of any yeah, of the most, original. It gets they, so big. And, so and that's what they say. They say all these guys, it. you know, everyone's, you know, and, and that's why I want to defend them a little bit right now as we're, you know, railing on them as if they're all left. They're really not. I mean, from people that know these people say they're not left wing people. It's just that it's getting to this place where they're being held accountable from that side. Just to the do editing something. has all been completely They would rather be, motivated. I mean, think about it. I, it made sense. That the was guys the goal. The goal literally was to make that. First of all, the the internet to is, decentralize everything. Yes, and the internet's that, a perfect example of uh, open anarchy. Like it, it self organized itself, but in all these original people that are the innovators, Jack Dorsey and you know what's his name from Facebook and all these, uh, they were the innovators. They were the first ones, and they were all pro that way. The problem is you have now thirty thousand employees, so now they have a say. Right. Who knows where they stand? Then you have political pressure, which is massive. Trying now. to be in good graces with the government. Yeah, and then you're like, then you want to keep your crowd happy. So let's say the crowd that goes so on. So this is what I I think where you're going right now is so I because I had a, a niece that used to work for Facebook, and I think every Friday Zuckerberg does like this big thing where everybody and the employees have a major voice. Yeah, and that I I imagine I don't know what maybe Doug could look up. What's the average age of an employee at Facebook? Plus, I'm, where's fa I'm guessing Facebook headquartered? I'm guessing it's younger. And mm, where's know. it headquartered? Yeah, over right? here. It's here. it's in it's in. Like, right, you know, so I mean, California. I think when yeah. you got a majority of your employees putting pressure on you to yep. say this or do that or police this, um, and then you're getting outside pressures, I mean, it just sucks, dude. It's, I mean, yeah, uh, I'm not saying that they're evil. I know nobody wants to no, feel sorry I, for billionaires, but I mean, I, 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 it would suck if this was like my baby. Like, imagine this. Look, okay? the median employee of Facebook's 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah so we know. And yeah. there's Silicon what Valley. Dealing with I, I, look, here's the deal. Yeah. I don't think they're evil, but what I think is, and of course, this is hindsight. They. They opened a door, now they're screwed. Yeah. And the door was, okay, we're going to step in and start editing stuff. Well, now you're screwed. Now mm -hmm. there's no, now that slippery slope, you're going down it. I no mean, I, you're not a utility uh, any longer. No, I agree, point. but I feel bad for him, dude. I mean, I, I've thought about this before with our own business. Like, imagine one day it gets to a place where we want to step away, right? It's, it continues to grow. It's this beautiful thing that we built. We're so proud of it, but we're also getting older, right? At a point where mm -hmm. we want to retire, yeah. we want to travel, we want to do whatever, right? And you say, and we don't want to just burn the bridge, to burn it down. It's like, right. let's keep it going. So let's step other people in. Let's get a board. Let's do these things. And then you start having the outside influence of people deciding what the content looks like. Or let's say totally. we did like a Joe Rogan move where we we still are the face of it, but then we sell the advertising. And then they start telling us what we should say for the brands. Yeah. I mean, you cannot say weight loss because it's not inclusive. Yeah. Well, this is, and, yeah. And, what I saw too with, and I, uh, again, I always bring us back to Star Wars somehow, but like George <laughs> Lucas. How are you like, going to connect this? <laughs> because, dude, he sold Everything it. connects to Star Wars. It does. You guys, I'm telling you. He's got a good point, I guess. Yeah. No, <laughs> because it, it just got away. Like after he sold it to Disney, like they had all these other people involved who have different narratives and different things they want to inject into the storyline the, the and, and and create something that has like hits all these sort of points and and is, is socially re relevant and all that and it, and it started to uh, compete with the actual storyline in the canon so. yeah so so here's okay here's the deal and this is this is going to be true for anybody or any company who values this open market of ideas when you value open market ideas that you're going to open the door for bad ideas and rude people and controversial stuff because that's what happens when you have an open market uh, of ideas. Here's how you would regulate that. The responsibility is not on the person holding the platform because the people putting out the opinions are the public and the consumer. The responsibility is on the consumer to control what they can and can't see. So what they should have done is they should have said, we're not going to ban anything except for things that are illegal because that's under the law and maybe pornography because this is, this is a non-pornography site. But besides that, you as a consumer, you have the power. You don't like something? Then you click on this feature that bans shit or blocks stuff that looks like that. It's on you, not us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take, and, but here's the problem. People are weak. <clears throat> People are so weak. They get on these social media platforms. They don't like something. I'm complaining to Facebook. You I clicked know. on it. You, yeah. you wimp. Like, you block it So yourself. that's the other thing that I'm not sure about is it, it, there's a very good chance. Because I remember I did a, back on um, April 20th, like, I don't know, two or three years ago, I did a, a marijuana post. You know, one of three I've done in five years yeah. or whatever. And I got a bunch of heat from people that, you know, I'm, that I'm promoting smoking or whatever like that. And, and I'm like, you know, what could have happened is maybe it's not the 
algorithm from you, uh, from Instagram, maybe I had a fucking couple people that complain. Yeah, that complain. Who and the me, hell follows you at this point, though, uh, Adam? You know, who doesn't know that? It you, doesn't matter, dude. Like you still, you know how it is. Like yeah. you, even even as well of a job as I think we've but it's done so of, funny of that getting rid of all the fucking. They complain yeah, to true. Instagram. It could have been just a random person, right? And I wouldn't be surprised if, if if there's something in the algorithm that hey, if five or more people complain about the same thing, well, no, that for person, sure is there. Yeah. Right. Remember it's, Lane? What happened to Lane? Yeah. He had a bunch of because he's aggressive when he goes after like fake diet people and diet pills and stuff like that but he's really aggressive about it and i guess a group of people organized got together and all said let's all complain at the same time to get him banned yeah and he did and he had to go through instagram and luckily he knew someone there and they were able to reverse it but he almost lost his business right so yeah. I'm, i don't know it could have been easily my own, someone in my own following that actually you know got all offended because i was going to have some wine and smoke some weed and said, oh god I wouldn't be surprised. Like uh, I said, I've I've had it. I've had people message me before. Just don't I'm, watch. Just leave. Yeah, That's yeah, all you got to do. Now I got to do. Now I'll do. It'll be the acronym if I if I do it again. We'll see. Which actually, I, you should. You know, we should say we're uh, come. You know, we're, uh, grape juice and trees yeah, with my <laughs> wife tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah, just come up with the with That's an not ultimate. a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, they actually, I think that, um, I think I'm actually, this is a good time to announce to you guys that I'm going to be stepping down and Katrina is going to take my spot on the podcast. Yeah. Apparently she's in more demand than I am. <laughs> <laughs> more people want to hear from her and talk to her. So yeah. it might be better for her to work here. I think I'm going to be a stay at home dad. Actually, I've always wanted nice, to Shut your face. <laughs> I might follow suit of that. Uh, right? So that's yeah. kind of cool. Shut your face. Uh, replace replace myself. right now. Yeah. Stay at home dads. Yeah. Hell no. That shit home dad podcast. I don't want to do that. I was, it's funny, this weekend I was with, uh, you know, hanging out out with Jessica and she's when I'm off on the weekend she's so like Yo, sit down I'll do that I'll do this no no you don't do anything and I said honey and she uh, this was like the I, I guess I said the best thing in the world to her but I said to her I said honey I'm not working today it's a weekend but that doesn't mean that I'm off we're still running the household and I said when is your day off and she looked at me like uh, and then we had sex so <laughs> It worked really well. No, no. All truth, all, all joking aside, uh, that job is hard as shit because you don't have like a you don't have off days, right? Like I'm not off, and I can just do whatever I want. So I said, no, you know, I'm I'm off work, but I don't mean I'm off. I still, you know, I'm part of the family. Man, you are really trying to score some points yeah, right now, yeah. aren't you? It's, it's true though. It's, it's true. <laughs> I want to say that publicly <laughs> to get more points. No, hey, hey, I got to tell you something, Adam. This is hilarious. Got me moist. So you know how you always talk about your your family having issues with the fact that you don't put sh shoes on your son? Yeah. Okay. So we went to my parents' uh, house. I've been waiting for this, by the way. Okay. Quietly waiting for when this moment happens for you. So we went to my parents' house because my sister, who's a photographer, um, and she does a great job, by the way, she uh, was she wanted to take pictures of my parents and all their grandkids, right? So my parents have, let's see, six, seven grandkids right now, early 60s. So they already have a lot of grandkids. And then she also invited my great-grandparents to take pictures. So she took these incredible pictures. So we're all there, right? So first Jessica shows up because I had to go pick up my older kids and I get there and, and my grandma looks at me and she goes, uh, you know, if you put shoes on your son, she's telling me in Sicilian and my grandmother's 80, she's in her mid eighties. You know, if you put shoes on your son, he'll walk much earlier. And Jessica gives me a look and I'm like, uh Oh, she's already said something to Jessica. So I'm like, no, I said, no, no. I said, you know, if you put the shoes on, then the muscles of the foot don't get developed and the nerves and the feet. And it was this debate with my grandma about <laughs> shoes. Like well, we used to put leather shoes with hard soles on our kid and they were walking at 10 months old you, you know he should be walking I'm like oh man what am i doing i'm gonna go back and forth with my grandma i can't <laughs> not gonna my win grandma. That one, i dude. dude i didn't realize how much uh shit i was gonna get up uh, with that i just didn't think that anyone really paid attention to that and boy did i i struggle with that so many people actually i would say i had more issues with the shoes than i did with the sugar once I kind of laid the law with like the don't yeah. give myself, give my kids sugar, like I think a lot of people kind of get that, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit more. The no shoes thing was like people did not understand that. Yeah. They just yeah. thought I was being a bad father by letting my son walk on rock because I let him rocks and asphalt and like, yeah. like just so long as it's not dangerous. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not, not in glass or things that they're going <laughs> to cut, cut him up. You're but like, I have to be a bad, but no, I, I, even like that, like Rocky kind of fire you know, pits, you know, uncomfortable asphalt or like yeah. little, like, um, well, the only way like 30 pounds, it's not going to hurt them. Yeah, yeah. And trust me, they'll tell you if it bothers them. Yeah. And he adapted to it really quick. But boy, they would everyone would freak out when they'd see that and be like, dude, relax. Yeah, like, I think that what I finally kind of made a point because she's like, I raised four kids. I raised all the grandkids. I know yeah, what I'm talking about. That. Right. And so I said, <laughs> I said, imagine if you put gloves on your baby from right away, how would their hands change and how they move? And then she kind of got it a little bit. And then I said, 
you know, no, not. I said, since you've been using a walker, because she's older and she, her, you know, her health is now starting to decline. That a boy, said, shame oh, her for dang, a walker. You're using no, your walker no, against no, her. No, 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 no. That's fucking dirty no, tactics, no, no, bro. No, 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 stop. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get this bitch. I'm gonna shame no. her for a walker. <laughs> no. You see why you're using this? And I it love sucks. her. Oh, yeah. She's the best. She's the best known in the world. That's not what I meant. Oh, this guy, anything to win an argument, bro. Yeah. Anything to win an argument. He's winning with the wife, but fucking shut her down. That's how it happened. I said, Mike dropped that bitch. I said to her, I said, that's why for so long we tried to keep you walking without yeah. it because then your body starts to adapt to it. And she totally understood. Yeah. That. You I know how you have arthritis and it's yeah. hard for you to ever yeah. get out of your seat? Yeah. Because <laughs> hey. you, you started using that walker. Yeah. Hey, you don't I, tell me what to do, Grandma. I, high five and Jessica afterwards. Oh, oh, walk God, out the room. Drop right. the oh. You know no, that. No, you no. know that reminds I me of her. talking about shaming and stuff like that, and get, and the barefoot conversation. Yeah, I feel like a dick now. <laughs> <laughs> oh Dude, we literally just pulled that out. I feel yeah, so that bad, wasn't yeah. you. That was yeah. all. Yeah. Us. You, we would never do that. Yeah. No, sorry, hey, no, no. We're just talking joking. about hurt feelings and stuff. So I. Uh, Every time we talk about this, actually, this subject, I always get people that DM me the the fucking Vivo shoes. What are they called? Oh, Justin? the barefoot shoes. Yeah, the barefoot shoes. Yeah, the yeah, barefoot the... shoes. They're always trying to get me to wear them or get me. Oh, you should have Max wear them. And I've I think I've talked about this worn them enough times, saying how ugly they are. Yeah. They're like the ugliest <laughs> things yeah. ever. I don't like. I also don't want to look bad. Yeah, well, that is exactly what I said. I said I'm not trying to get I, laid in those things. You, it's this isn't about convincing me that I don't think that they have a functional purpose. Like if you're into those shoes, by all means. Like if and you're getting sex, I'm more power to you if you have the ability to do both. But I am not a fan of the way those shoes look. And I and the, the shoes stay on when we bang. Well, I'm a start. shoe. I'm a shoe guy, so I'm like I'm into those things. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just I'm not that functional. Like I'll just take my shoes off and walk around barefoot for a while and train barefoot and yeah. get it. I don't need to wear ugly ass fucking finger yeah. shoes. Hey, speaking of looking good, <laughs> so you did that 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 video or whatever that story with uh, your wife. So Jessica and I get on there and we start watching. By the way, you guys are adorable. It's like great stories, and she's talking about how she met you and all that stuff. And Jessica's like, Adam's skin looks really good. I'm oh. like, I'm like, I know. Even through the yeah. video. I know. Yeah. And I, I was telling her, and so she's using Caldera too now. Oh, you she, got her on it. Yes. And she, by the way, we ran out, so yeah. don't take whatever bottle they say. I out. actually haven't got Katrina to use it yet. So you know what's great about it, though, too? This is I've been wearing it like, Courtney loves the way it smells. Because like, uh -oh. I used to wear yeah. like, you know, some aftershave or whatever, but that always like gets her head to turn. Does she like, like, she like, like this smell. one or the uh, uh, the cream? That one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. funny because Katrina doesn't like this one. She likes the smell. So the oh, one? that reminds me. Doug, I knew I had a follow-up commercial for Caldera. We mentioned, okay. And oh, the order? The order we was wrong. Up. Did you see that? Yes, we messed up. Yeah, so. It's that first. What do you first. mean? So you do the cream first, no, then that? No, you do or? that first. first. Uh, and then you do the moisturizer. Yeah, and so somebody like school. Because the oil is is what protects. What's, a, what's that called? A, a, a esthetician? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Like an esthetician got on there and like totally. Fucking... I got the same DMs. <laughs> we totally. Got, listen, yeah. <laughs> we're fitness experts. I know. I love what we do. We do something. That's why I, yeah, and I appreciate it too. I this is not me talking shit. minimally with this yeah. subject. I appreciate when people, especially when they have a good approach about it. Like I don't like when someone gets on there and talks yeah. shit like when I'm wrong about something. But uh -huh. if you like, hey, just to let you know, like you said this order, this is actually the, and I guess it has something to do with the the way how much it opens your pores up and you don't want to I don't no, know No, you want to you want to get the oil to protect cuz it cuz otherwise bacteria can go through the openings in the pores and then that causes that can cause acne and inflammation so the oil is protective yeah. then the moisturizer is the final thing yeah that's so it goes on. this then the moisturizer, yes. moisturizer. Yes. I hope we got it right this time I don't want more DMs <laughs> yeah. you know that reminds me of <laughs> though you guys what you said about the shoes earlier reminded me of something I had uh, I was on uh, Lugavere's podcast uh, again the other day we talked about holidays and how to avoid gaining weight and all that stuff. And I focused a lot on quality of life versus the like, count your macros, count your calories type of deal. Yeah. Great response. But it, you know, it made me think of, there's really you know, two categories of things you could do for your, your health or through your health, um, but, it, but they also help each other. So let me be more clear, right? You can either do things that will give you more time in terms of longevity, or you could do things that will give you a better time in terms of the amount of time that you're already here, right? So there's enjoy, there's quality of life now, and then there's also longevity. And oftentimes they help each other. In other words, if you improve your quality of life with certain things, 
oftentimes that will also improve your longevity. So like having better relationships with the people around you, um, enjoying the occasional glass of wine with your wife, that's a better time. And that's also probably going to increase longevity or improve longevity as studies will show. Of course, now you could also go in the extreme. I can do drugs all day long to try and make today a better time, but now I'm severely reducing my longevity and eventually I get a you know, worse time. I could also do things to really impact my longevity, like severely restrict my calories, right? Low calories have been shown in animal studies to improve or increase someone's longevity, but it's so low calorie that you're going to feel tired. You're not going to have as much strength. Libido is going to drop. So then your quality mm. goes down. So it's important to consider both. So the shoes reminded me that, Adam, because yeah, you could wear barefoot shoes, which would give you more functional ability in your feet, yeah. but you're having a worse time now because you look like shit. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and your wife's not a And it really is. It's just that. It's, um, and I told, I think I, don't, I have to like explain. We'll never every... get sponsored by them anyway. I, dude, whatever. the Minimus is cool though. It doesn't have those little like toe I mean, it's, I'm just, I'm a shoe guy. So I'm like, yeah. I'm into the way shoes look over them being functional. Just, yeah. it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I openly admit that. So it's not like a, uh, and so when guys try and convince me that I should wear these shoes, it's like, mm -hmm. you're just stop, like yep. quit wasting your time in my DMS. I'm not going to yep. wear those shoes. Nor am I going to put them on my son either. I don't want him to get beat up at school. So yeah. it's, <laughs> it's that simple. He's like, a big kid. He and, get beat and, up. and it's also, by the way, if you're, if he's running around barefoot 90% of the time and the only time he puts on some sneakers, you're right. Right, that's it's not point. a big deal. That's right what we there, do. Yeah. We're like 90, 10 yeah, with, yeah. The, with the baby. All right. Because you brought this up, I have to say it because people are going to be like, close the loop. You meant, you mentioned the point IQ point drop. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say this real quick right so they just did a study or they did a study relatively recently that showed that chilled that babies born during the pandemic uh are registering with about a 22 point lower iq that's so a lot saying, right Dude. that's devastating that's, that's a lot lot that's devastating it's Insane. a massive point drop so what they're showing is that these babies are developing slower speaking less they're basically missing milestones and they're equating it to this about this, as, through testing about 20 percent a 20 point drop an IQ. That means if you have a decent IQ at 100, you're at 80, which now you're getting to borderline not doing so What's well. What's the age range? Of These this? are babies born during the pandemic. Oh. And they think it has to do with the fact that the babies were isolated. So, so much of young children's brain development and IQ is related to being around other kids, being around other people, yeah, reading, social development, yeah. reading faces. Well, at least mm -hmm. we slowed the curve, right, though? Yeah. God damn it. You know, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to use an, I'm going to use an example before it. Cause I, otherwise I'll go on a rant. I'm going to go use an example. Have to okay. get up, dude. I could get an, <laughs> I can get an infection on my <laughs> finger and I could cut my finger off, which means the infection's gone, but at what cost? Okay. The treatment cannot be worse than the disease. And what these policies are doing is they're, all they're counting are COVID deaths. That's it. They're infections and deaths. They don't consider anything else. What are we seeing now? By the way, go back on our podcast. We said this exact thing. So if you think I'm full of shit, yeah, I'll prove you wrong. We said this exactly. You are going to see unintended consequences. Yep. What have we seen? Yep. Suicide, Suicide through the rates roof. going through the roof. Overdoses on drugs through the roof. Alcohol through the roof. Alcohol use through the roof. Obesity, the speed at which obesity is growing has doubled. You also, We also haven't seen yet the devastating Anxiety, economic depression. impacts because- the wealthy did fine. Everybody below that aren't doing so well. A lot of small biz businesses have, have oh, been destroyed. Decimated small business. And that causes deaths. That causes diseases. So the treatment, yes, we have less COVID deaths and less infections, but we have more deaths overall, more pain overall with these policies because we only consider one damn metric. So let's think about that for a second because they're going to try and do it again. And you want to keep putting your kid in school where they're looking at faces with masks. That part of the brain is very important. It's not getting developed. And those are crucial years. For example, isolating yourself. There's lots of problems. All, all this stuff. We have to consider so what's, all okay, the consequences. So I, I, I believe, not everybody, most people uh, are on board with that message now. I really Until do. they get scared again. Not around that's, here. That's yeah, my opinion. I, I no, I, I even think around here is 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 even. I, I that, think you're that, right. I think I, some of the. I, I like. I don't believe I, that, but I have not. I seen think that. if they if they try with uh, Omicron or Omicron, yeah. how do I say it? Omicron, yeah. Am, Omicron, whatever. Yeah. If, well, I think with because you know that right now it's like quadrupling in speed right now. It's supposed it's super, to be. It spreads super fast, but so far the reports right, so are the, showing the, that's the, less. Yeah, the death, the deaths, and hospital rate is is flat or down. And yet, it's 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 spreading at four x yeah. or something like that. Yeah. 
so there is some fear around like the California and New York areas yeah. still trying to shut back down. My prediction is if they if Newsom pulls some shit like that, I think you're gonna see I think you're gonna see protests I the th- same way you see over and I I think there's definitely some, hope so. some fatigue over this stuff. I think so. However, I think that when people get scared that they start to act in, in funny ways. And I think what you're gonna see is two different Americas. You're gonna see blue states well, and you're gonna see red states. We went to Arizona. How different is it in Arizona than it is California? Yeah. It's a different it's world. It's crazy the whole rest of uh, you know America how like there's stadium full of people right next to each other and like everybody's fine, but we can't recognize that because we're in this state where everybody's like scared shitless and just can't get over. It. I just feel like it's been so long now that if that's like your thought process, you just get so entrenched in that thought process that you can't get out of it now. You're stuck in a Listen, loop. without sounding insensitive, it's here. It's not going away. It's endemic. We have to accept it. We cannot keep doing what we did before because we, listen, not only did all those other unintended consequences happen, we literally printed 90% of every dollar ever created. Yeah. Over that period, oh, don't even go there. That's, no, that's a whole other. We don't. We haven't even seen the consequences of that. But here, look. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to beat the fear drum because yeah. this is what gets people to agree. It's to do, coming. Agree. So yeah. I don't. So I don't disagree with that. And we obviously, being in California, we'll, we'll see California, and New York will lead the way in in, in, in being the, morons. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I I predict fear, this fear, time fear, fear, fear. if they do that, if they even do, which they could very well be. I think that you're going to see protests like we have never seen yet. I hope. I hope not pe- here at least, right? I hope people are more are going to be like, listen, I get it. I'm going to take my own, like, I'm going to do it myself. But what you guys are these these laws are just causing lots of problems. Look, I'm going to I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to read one thing for you. Still yet, no conversations about treatment, just the uh, vaccine. Yeah, and I'm going to read one thing to you that's going to highlight the fear drum. It's already started the the beating of the of the drum, right? This is from the WhiteHouse.gov website. So this is the official White House website. We are intent on not letting Omicron disrupt work and school for the vaccinated. You've done the right thing, and we will get through this. For the unvaccinated, you're looking at a winter of severe illness and death for yourselves, your families, and the (laughs) hospitals you may soon overwhelm. What a fucked up statement. Wow, dude. That's just like, that's some fear, like scare the fuck out of people. And that's from the White House, which uh, is, is kind of crazy. So expect the fear. The fear gets people to do what the politicians want and make no mistake. If you want to look back at the, at the bills that we spent with all the money, dig through them and you will see a good 90% of that money went to special interests and stuff yeah. and friends. So this is, this is kind of what happens. So I have faith be, in my people. Yeah. We're going to, we're not going to let, we're not going to stand for this bullshit. I hope so. Hey, look, I hope you're enjoying this episode real quick. At the beginning of the episode, you heard us talking about testosterone replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy for men and for women. If you're trying to find a good place The only place that we work with is mphormones.com. They are regenerative sport, health and sport medicine. They're very, they're the best. They're the best in the industry. They're not afraid to prescribe testosterone to men and women at appropriate doses to give them the best results. So if you want to improve the quality of your life, I've had a great experience. I've now been using TRT. I talked about this on the show uh, an episode or two ago. The improvement in the quality of life for me was tremendous. And this is what we hear from a lot of people who supplement with testosterone to get their levels up in the high normal range. So if you're interested, again, it's mphormones.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Nick Hibino. How often should I switch up my lifting exercise for max gains? Oh, this is actually a really good question because there's like a bell curve with this, Mm. right? So if you switch too soon, then what happens is you you lose the ability to get good at an exercise and really reap its benefits. And there's a, a different learning curve for each exercise, like barbell curls. You start to master them very quickly, a barbell squat, much longer. And through that mastery process, once you get to a point where you can really push weight and have good stability, then you really see a lot of gains. And that can take a while. So you'll want to stick to that exercise for a while. But if you do an exercise too long without switching things up, Risk of injury goes up. Plateaus can start to happen. Um, so it's it's kind of different from exercise to exercise and program to program. So it's a hard it's a hard one to answer. Well, do you guys have some some general? Because that's a great point, right? So what you'll see when I'm doing my own programming, right? If I'm not following something specifically, I I will keep things like the you know barbell back squat or a standard you know barbell overhead press and deadlift. 
uh, in my routine for sometimes months right. before I phase it out or transition to me. And normally what I do is I just interrupt it with some like, you know, multi-planar you know, lunges mm -hmm. or cossack squats yeah. or Bulgarian split squats. And then I'll be right back at it just to make sure that I'm kind of addressing everything. But I'll, I'll keep a, a movement like that in my, my programming for months with just, like I said, a little yeah. bit of intermittent. Now, if I was just doing, you know, easy curl, bicep curls, shit, I ain't doing that more than maybe four workouts in a row. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four workouts in a row and I'm, I'm out of it. I'm already transitioning into something different. Yeah. I think those higher skill ones, like they're always going to make it in the rotation. The only thing that's going to change a lot is either the tempo, the intensity, Little you know, the point. rep count, like, yeah. you know, those variables that you can adjust, but still get some of those same benefits, but now you're getting a new stimulus that your body's reacting to. So I still like to keep them around, but yes, I do incorporate other exercises to kind of fill the needs especially if, if i'm just training a lot like uh to the beginning of this podcast talking about just training in, in one direction too much you know i want to make sure i'm considering a lot of other variables that yeah. will benefit my body that's a great point um very very good point because you can so the complex exercises the gross motor movements ones are the ones that you can keep in for a long time just because there's so much you can gain from them there's so much that's involved um, you know, you could squat for a whole year and get phenomenal gains out of a squat um, so long as you do auxiliary movements and some other exercises to address imbalances. But then simple exercises, you adapt very quickly and you benefit more from variety, right? So one rule of thumb, or what, I don't even say a rule of thumb, but one thing to consider is with the complex, really valuable exercises, you can just modify the exercise itself and now you've got a little bit of variety. For example... I may do traditional barbell squats for a while and then notice I'm starting to plateau and say, okay, rather than not doing back squats, what I'll do now is I'll do a pause squat mm -hmm. or a box squat or I'll change the tempo. Or like a you wide said. stance, wide stance. Yes, narrow, narrow stance, stance. Exactly. or heels elevated. Like There's a lot of stuff that you can play within the, those movements. I will say this though. If I'm training a client and we have been doing a lot of those movements consistently and we've let's say we're in a hard plateau, I may interrupt the program and completely change all the exercises just to try and break a plateau because I mm. find that if they've been training consistently with me, we've been doing some of these movements yeah. and and I've maybe I've manipulated some other things in the routine and I'm not I'm not I'm not breaking through the plateau fast enough, then I may introduce a whole bunch of new movements completely that that way I know I'm going to get that. Let's give the audience some takeaways, okay? So let's be more specific. What are some of your favorite I guess interrupter movements or exercises for some of the biggest compound. Well, I, just, lifts. I just named mine, right? Bulgarian split squats, so for squats. or multi-plane lunge, multi-planer lunges, or um, like uh, caustic squats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, those... I agree with you. I like the the single, the like the unilateral stuff mm -hmm. for barbell squats. Yeah, front squats sometimes too. I'll yeah. do front squats instead of back squats. Uh, for deadlifts, sometimes I'll do trap bar or sumo instead of conventional. Or a high pull, much more complex, but I notice a high pull's got some good carryover from a deadlift. Bench press, that's as easy as going incline, in my opinion, or using dumbbells, in my opinion. And then overhead press, I'll go from barbell to behind the neck barbell to dumbbell uh, press or to an Arnold press or even a, a like I saw you doing today. Uh, bottoms up press. Yeah, bottoms up press. Yeah, I like to do stuff like that to really address like stability issues. If I feel like I'm plateauing or coming close to it, I like to challenge instability. I like to challenge, you know, rotational movements and always constantly looking at that, especially pressing mm -hmm. because your your shoulder is so complex in its uh, abilities uh, to to move. And so to be able to take it through full range of motion and then mm -hmm. challenge it along those ranges of motion is very crucial for me, you know, squatting, you could just place the bar in a different loading position. I like, you know, Zercher squats for that, yeah. uh, which, you know, are great. It's totally challenges you in a different way. And so you just got to think, you know, other, other uh, instances that you'll get, you know, good benefit from it as well, but a totally different stimulus. And that interruption looks like, what did you guys say? Two to four weeks now you have that, you're doing that new movement in replace of it and then you bring it back. Is yeah, that, I'll do ex I'll exactly. At least like three weeks. Yeah, yeah. exactly like that. So like four. Although yeah. I did do unilateral for about three months, but my my circumstance was different. I was noticing. Well, yeah, there's exceptions to the rule. Pain. Where you I was getting pain, you know, and it, yeah. and it wasn't going away. And I and then I noticed a huge, here's a, here's a good thing to keep in mind. 
when you change to a new movement, uh, that's especially from like a you know, bilateral to unilateral, and you notice a huge discrepancy between the two sides, probably stick in there a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. And I want to add the the single leg deadlift to your, your oh, good alternatives one. for deadlifting. That's one of my favorite when I'm going to stop barbell deadlifting for a while is to go into the single leg deadlift uh, with dumbbells mm -hmm. for a while before I go back. Next question is from Ava Fit. Are unilateral movements more beneficial than bilateral movements? Oh, nice follow-up question. I know, right? No, they're just different, and they have yeah. their own value. So bilateral movements allow... Bilateral means two legs, two arms. Unilateral means one arm, one leg at a time. Bilateral movements allow you to push more weight, generate more you know, central nervous system force. Um, you're going to get... You're going to build bigger gains in strength. Unilateral is great for stability. It's good for creating balance, preventing imbalances that can develop from bilateral. Stay in one for too long and you start to see problems. Unilateral stuff, you're just not going to build as much strength, power, and muscle if you only stay there. And then bilateral, you start to develop imbalances. So I'm going to go out on a limb <clears throat> and actually challenge it a little bit, saying that I do think that unilateral movements do have more benefits for something specific like just health and longevity. There's no, there's no doubt bilateral movements so both feet, both arms are going to build the most amount of muscle, which in turn could also burn the most body fat. So body, so aesthetic goals, you got to have both in there. And I think that bilateral, you cannot mm -hmm. ne ne neglect. But if someone was just, oh, I just want to feel good, move well, uh, be healthy, longevity goal, there's a lot of value to unilateral. If you were to only do unilateral training, and there's some, there's a lot of coaches and trainers that that – uh, live by that philosophy. Uh, you know what the downside of that is? Is that you, you can't know, get it strong. Well, no, not that. Not just that. But when I train, well, like when you train the average person that's deconditioned, mm. unilateral is a step above bilateral in a lot of exercise. Like I'm gonna take someone who's deconditioned. Maybe they're like 60. I'm there's not. I'm not doing very many unilateral exercises because they lack. They even lack the stability to do bilateral well. So to jump them to unilateral, especially for lower body exercise, maybe unless mm. I'm on a machine. Um, is going to be really hard. So, you know, I, I would go it's, unilateral, but I used to have to start with bilateral, especially with older clients. It's an interesting argument because I've heard this from strength coaches on both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, like a Mike Boyle would, will claim it's more beneficial for athletes to train in unilateral uh, work specifically because it, yes, the longevity aspect to it, but you get strong and stable and in, in a position that is more translatable. Uh, towards what you're doing, yeah. uh, either on the ice or on the field, or you know, you're you're just more you're, you're more apt to be in a split stance, or you know, out wide, or rotating, and and being able to drive and and get explosive forces, and be able to uh, stabilize in those forces is at the up is almost at a higher priority in, in his argument. Right? Well, and and to his argument, and he makes a great case on this. I mean, uh, most sports require some sort of running. And running is unilateral, right? Yep. You know, so uh, it makes sense that, and I can get behind that. Yeah, but but again, the, then now to, and this is where I'm kind of like in the middle of this because then, then the other side, it's like all about building that base strength, correct, and support, right? So you can generate more force, you can be strong and stable in that force, but the, the caveat there is that if you get into those split stance and those different types of uh, positions, you may not be able to be as familiar with that, which means you can't generate the force in those positions. Here's where I'm going to debate him, because I, I respect him, right? Yeah. He's, he's a good trainer. Here's what I'm going to debate. What have we seen with the studies on athletes? When they're young, they're better off doing a wide range of sports. Yes. And then when they get older, it's better to be more specific. Now, we used to think, if you take a little kid and you want them to be a great soccer player, just have them play soccer. Just specialize the whole time. Studies now show that the kid who plays soccer, basketball, football, and gymnastics will be better at soccer later on than the kid that just did soccer because they, they built a wider range. They can of, problem solve with their body a lot more effectively. Yes. And so it's like, again, you could be good in one direction so far. But then again, there's repetitive stress injuries as a result. There's you get good at it, but at the same time, you don't have the ability to problem solve outside of that yeah, confine. Yeah. So if I'm training a younger athlete, uh, I'm going to go bilateral, general strength and power, and then move unilateral. As they get older, and this is how I used to train athletes anyway. Yeah. When I would train an older athlete, it was much more. My training was much more specific. You know, if I'm training a 15 year old, like I'm not doing super specific football resistance training if you play football. I'm just going to get you stronger mm -hmm. generally. If I'm training a 
college football player. Like at this point, you're in college, you're doing good, you got the strength. Mm -hmm. Now we got to work on the more specific application. Yeah, I think building a base, a, a foundational yes. base of strength and support is is at the utmost importance to then venture out into you know these unilateral positions, which will benefit the yes. whole. Well, I would just say, why wouldn't you incorporate both? Yeah, they both 100%. great you know, tools. Like, there's no reason. It's to, such a silly debate to me. Well, yeah. because that's fitness for you, right? It's, yeah. This is. I mean, so we get questions like this. It's always a camp. Which is better? One or the other. This is. I hear this from these coaches. Say this is better. This coach is this better. The truth is, if uh, the program that beats both of those is the one that incorporates both, that's yeah. why we exist. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I think you, 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 if it's for the average person listening and watching right now, they both have tremendous value, and if you don't incorporate both you're going to miss out on something and that it means you're not going to reach your full potential so it's not a which is better it's a which is better for that for this specific person yeah. with this specific goal and what they've been doing you know for the last you look know, at four the months. appropriate tool and apply it yeah because it depends on the person i'll see a person's results and their workouts what they've been doing and who they are and i'll say unilateral for you and then i'll look at someone else and say bilateral for you so it's the they're all tools you're building a house. You got to use a hammer and a screwdriver, and you got to use a saw. You got to use everything. All right. Next question is from Zelen Castiot. Is vitamin supplementation necessary if you eat a balanced diet? You know what this? Okay, this reminds me of one of the best sales pitches I ever was taught when it came to selling supplements. <laughs> the multivitamin. Yes. Yes. And I, it was great because it totally sounded like it made sense. Yeah, yeah. So what they used to teach us back in the day when I was managing gyms and all that stuff is they, and they were trying to get us to sell more vitamins is they'd say, you could have the perfect diet, but because you're eating low calorie, lose weight, there's only so many nutrients you can get with that. So, but you still have micronutrient requirements, which are higher. This is why everybody should be on a multivitamin. And it made so much sense to me. I'm like, yeah, 1500 calories necessary, but you need 2,500 calories worth of nutrients it made so here's why that's not necessarily true. So a multivitamin is like a nuke. It's like everything, right? When it comes to nutrients, it, if you really want benefits, it's got to be specific to you because mm. if I take a multivitamin that's got everything, maybe my zinc is optimal and now I'm going high in zinc and now which affects my copper and other things in my body or maybe my vitamin D is low and my multivitamin doesn't have enough vitamin D to support that for me. So if you really want to know what's ideal for you, I don't care what your diet is, get your nutrient levels tested and then no. spe and then supplement specifically for your body. That would be my advice. No, that, I think that's the, that's the answer because what is what is a, a balanced diet even mean? What, yeah. is that, what, is that, what does that mean to somebody? Does it mean you're just, you, you have an even amount of protein, carbs, and fats? You could do that and still be missing some serious nutrients. Right, if yeah. you're not doing diversifying with color in your diet, yeah. if you, what types of meat, where you're getting all of your protein from. So even having a balanced diet, you could easily miss out on some micronutrients that you don't realize. The best answer is exactly what you said. And instead of just throwing the whole kitchen sink, which is like find a multivitamin. Find out what you're deficient in. Yeah, find out what you need to take on a regular basis because you lack in that. And then, and then of course, I, and I've shared this before, right? Like with the omega-3s, for example, um, I, my kind of like personal goal is I try and get, you know, three servings or so a week of like fish. And if I don't, then I have my omega-3s there to, yeah. to supplement it. So I think once you kind of figure out where your levels are, where you, you lack or you don't lack, and then you, you are aware of what your normal diet looks like and your tendencies and then what foods uh, produce those nutrients, then you can go, oh, wow, this week I haven't had X, Y, and Z. So, and those are rich in X, Y, and Z nutrients. So I'm going to supplement yeah. that. Or, hey, this week I was great. I hit all those things. So lay off and, and save the supplements. Yeah. It's, it's even, it, it even gets more complex sometimes because you could be, your lifestyle could cause you or your body to, you know, be deficient in certain nutrients based off of, let's say, stress mm -hmm. or lack of sleep, or your body doesn't, Maybe you, your body doesn't synthesize cholesterol into vitamin D very well. So you supplement with vitamin D, right? but you don't see the numbers right. go up very much. So you need to take more than the average person. absorbing it properly? Yeah, that's another one. Gut right, health, because yep. yeah, you're swallowing it too. It's like uh, a lot of times too, like having, was it fat soluble? And yeah. like having like that added in uh, to be able to shut all those nutrients is, is a whole part of the process as well. People don't consider Yeah, and then one last thing, like vitamins and minerals are not innocuous, okay? Some of them, yes, are water soluble. So whatever your body doesn't use, you you get rid of, you know, relatively good. But some of them get stored. Minerals and fat soluble vitamins. So you can cause problems and trouble for yourself. I don't, okay, so you guys remember in the '90s how there was this huge push to have women take calcium, 
right? Because oh, of yeah. osteoporosis was mm-hmm. on the rise. And they said, oh, you know, bones need calcium. So let's supplement. Let's make everybody supplement with calcium. And of course, that, that's an issue. That's stupid because if you don't have the signal to build bone, you can take all the calcium you want. It's not going to do anything. Plus, you need vitamin D and other stuff. So anyway, they did this general like calcium. You know, take this for bone. And then you had all these people developing calcium deposits in their arteries. And there's issues with taking too much calcium because it was this just this broad brush stroke when if you don't know what you need, you don't just take everything. So that's and it, by the way, if you have a deficiency and you take a vitamin or mineral to fill it and it works, life changing. So I do want to say that as well. Sure. It can make a tremendous difference. Next question is from Lean Queen. What are some good qualities or red flags to look for in a nutritionist? Have you guys ever worked with a client who worked with a nutritionist that was just terrible? Yeah. Where you saw what they did and you're like, wow, just I can't old school, I, like food pyramid. Oh, I've actually had pretty I've good had experiences one. with nutritionists. I haven't had to. I'm trying to think of a bad I one. I had right one now. bad one. Um, most of them are pretty good. Most of them, uh, I think, uh, come from a behavioral as- point. I think that's how a good. Those are the good ones. That's how you know you have a good one, right? When they're when they're they're looking at uh, addressing the behaviors around your eating versus just breaking down. Like if someone just breaks down what your body needs macro and calorie wise, and then they prescribe a diet just based off of that, that's a red flag that Mm -hmm. they're probably not that good versus having a conversation around your eating patterns, the things you like, you don't like, and, you know, digging into why you eat these foods or why you gravitate to these certain things or why you tend to binge on the, like someone who's trying to talk to you about that uh, versus just breaking down nutritionally what your body needs. Um, I, that's your sign you're with a good I'm, one. I'm a hundred percent yeah. agree with you. I, in the, and they're a lot different now than they were 20 years ago. 20 years ago, they didn't talk about uh, food intolerances. It was just allergies or no allergies. So someone had an intolerance to gluten. It was like, you know, it wasn't something they even considered. It was less about the behavior and more about the, you know, look at your calories and eat these foods and here's your meal plan type of deal. But now I'm seeing a lot more of the behavior stuff. So I think they're pretty good. Somebody who's an actual nutritionist um, is probably generally going to be better than the average fitness and health influencer that's going to recommend Nutrition. So that's that. I want to make that point because uh, I don't want people to be like, "Oh, I heard you know some nutritionists aren't good, so I'm going to go with this Instagram influencer." You're <laughs> still, more likely yeah, to have like a, the worst <laughs> nutritionist is still slap than that. you. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to get really bad uh, information. So here's the things to consider. Red flags are: do you do you not like working with them? Because if that that makes a big difference, do they not consider your behaviors and how to work with behaviors, not just you know calories, macros, and, and that kind of stuff. And do they not consider things like food intolerances, digestion, uh, you know, your, how your stool is, your heartburn, that kind of stuff. Those would be some of the red flags I would yeah, say. Yeah, are they not working into your lifestyle either? Like So like trying to present you with items and things that are just not even something you would even go out and buy. Yeah. Like it's, I've, I've had good nutritionists where they actually like go shopping with them and, and they, they try and make it so it's not too far away from what they would normally eat with their families and all that. It's just, you know, a bit tighter. It's a bit like more whole foods based. It's a little more of healthier options uh, for them to pick and, and, and keep incorporating. So I just like when they work with uh, the person's behavior versus like just trying to give them a plan and being super rigid about it. Yeah. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our fitness and health guides. They can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram, except for those of us who are a little shadow banned, but you can try. Uh, Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And for those of you that can find us on Instagram, there are ways. So be smart. See if you can find us and follow us.